Welcome to the Science of Growth Podcast, where you'll be captivated by the fascinating world of personal development. Raymond Rivera shares dynamic insights, captivating personal accounts, and explorations into the halls of mental growth. Now sit back, brace yourself, and be transformed by the rewiring of your mind. Welcome to episode number seven of the Science of Growth podcast. I am your host, Raymond Rivera, MBA. Today's going to be another good one, applicable to all types of relationships that you are in or that you're trying to build. This is important in self-government and in organizational team building. So pay attention. Trust me, you'll have to. All right. So, But before I do, a quick update. My new book, The Circular Continuum Paradigm Shift Manifesto, is now out on Kindle, paperback, and hard copy. And the audio version is soon to be released in the coming week. If you're not into reading, this audio book is for you, and I'm super excited about it. This is something that's going to be big. I can feel it. I know it. First and foremost, my thoughts are my thoughts. I am not the spokesman. For anyone else other than Raymond, Rivera, my family, and my business. So remember, be wise when you listen to me. Eat the watermelon and spit out the seeds. And if the seeds are good enough for you, then by all means, eat the whole thing. Choose wisely when you listen to me, okay? Now, what do I mean by regression to the mean? The title of this podcast is called Regression to the Mean. What does that mean? So regression is a state of falling backward. It is the polar opposite of progression or development. Either you are progressing and moving forward, or you are regressing and moving backwards. I would make the argument that even stagnancy or staying in the same spot is regression. The mean is a term that signifies average. So in operations, we have different metrics In other words, data numbers that use a lot of averages, okay? Such as mean time to repair. This is in the maintenance department. Now that means the average time it takes to repair a piece of machinery. I'm just using this as an example. Do you want to turn your business dream into a reality? Renaissance Business Coaching can help. Our team of experienced coaches will work with you one-on-one to craft the perfect blueprint for success. Launch your business in no time with expert business coaching and financial planning. With our team at your side, you'll have the support and resources you need to reach your goals faster. Don't delay. Contact Renaissance Business Coaching at 502-305-3545 or email us at contact at rgfleadership.com. Mention the science of growth for 50% off your next service. Now back to the podcast. Now, regression to the mean is a falling back towards the average way of being. Here is the tough part for many of you overly emotionally driven leaders. If you are not careful, your emotions can blind you from the average way of being for an individual. You can be blinded by your emotional intelligence. Now, let's talk personal relationships. Everyone has a motive. It is your personal obligation to understand that motive and understand the motive behind every relationship that you have. Let's not be naive here. This exists. Everyone has a motive. No matter how much you say that it does it, it does. That significant other that you thought was real with you the whole time turned out to be different, didn't they? That's not on them, though. That is your fault because you chose to believe that the information that you were provided was true. But you failed to figure out what was truly the average way of being for that person. Now in business, interviewees typically pull the wool over the eyes of business leaders. And that's because the business leaders themselves don't have discernment. They often become dumbfounded by the person That they turned out to be. They're dumbfounded by the fact that the person they hired was completely different. They never saw it coming. And once again, that is the leader's fault. So let's dig deeper. Where did this concept of regression to the mean really come from? 
The concept of regression to the mean was first introduced by Sir Francis Galton, a British statistician and the cousin of Charles Darwin in the late 19th century. Galton observed that extreme characteristics, so for example, height and intelligence, in parents are not usually passed on completely to their offspring, that is to their children. Instead, the characteristics in the offspring tend to move or regress towards the average or mean for the population. Let's talk about this first. In data, what is variation? This is the constant change in values. This is when the data shows variance from the target. In simple terms, regression to the mean tells us that whenever we see an anomaly or an abnormal data point, this isn't the normal way of being. It typically signifies some outlier or external factor that made it turn that way. Here is the relevance in people. In all my years interviewing and being presented with information for decision making, you have to consider the source of that information. Where is the information coming from and what is the motive behind it? Okay, one thing I need you to understand is that we are all energy and energy transfers. If you're wondering if this is true, I want you to touch a hot surface and then touch another hot surface and see if it doesn't transfer from one source to another. Why is this so important? Because energy is often held inside of a container or a cup. And I subscribe to a simple logic in order to discover the energy inside of this container. Quote, you have to shake the cup to find out what is inside of it. End quote. I spent a great deal of time as an operations leader in the printing industry, and I'm going to relate this to making a color. Now, making a color requires different components to be mixed together. So if I put a little bit of this or a little bit of that, and I'm not balanced in my formula, the color doesn't turn out the way in which I want it to. It has variance. And I'm going to talk about variance in the next episode and that is going to blow your mind. We're going to talk about something very, very important. Now that container, which has ink, may have a label on it. But you don't know if the label is correct until you pour out the components inside of it. Labels themselves give us a general sense of what energy is contained therein. So in the example, there is yet another corresponding effect with us humans specifically in leadership when you are evaluating a leader or an individual. Now, the body is the container. It is the container of the spirit. But we have to find out what is inside of it. I will tell you what's inside of it. One word, paradigm. I've mentioned paradigm consistently over multiple episodes. So I'm going to get into it again. But let's cover this briefly so you can understand why this is so important in relationship building. Which paradigm or micro paradigm are we really seeking to unpack or expose? One is the psychoanalytic paradigm. We want to know what has happened to individuals and how it has happened to them. We want to look at their cognitive paradigms. Why do they believe this has happened to them the way that it has? We want to look at sociocultural paradigms, behavioral paradigms. These are the habits and the cultural norms that these individuals or organizations subscribe to. So these are very important for you to gather whether or not the individual seeking this relationship has what I term as heart issues, heart being subconscious mind or unconscious mind deep below the surface or performance issues. Now, typically, performance issues can be, can be coached through, meaning a person with a performance issue, you as a leader can coach them out of that problem and guide them or redirect them towards the goal or the target. But correspondence exposes itself yet again. If you're not aware of this law of correspondence, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. This is a natural law that tells us that there is a connection 
or a relationship between all things in nature. So this is where the concept of as above, so below, and as below, so above comes from. But in biblical terms, you may have heard the saying, what is bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what is loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And although this is a metaphysical construct for the initiate, the person who is new to this thought or understanding is wise to continue listening and growing as we speak on this interesting concept in the Science of Growth podcast. So the shaking up effect is when a leader asks the tough questions to discover the true motive behind the individual or individuals. Once again, you have to shake the cup or the container to find out what is inside of it. Now, I know this from experience. Yes, I was a victim of brainwashing, as I said in the first episode. I was catfished also. Now, I was catfished before catfish became a popular term. As crazy as it sounds, that term did not come out until after I was a victim of it. I was deceived for a very, very long time. My whole paradigm was shifted. My subconscious mind was impressed with conscious thoughts of another individual. And once that disconnection happened, my whole world changed. But I allowed that to happen because I brought someone into my personal space and I did not discover or discern what was really happening, what was really going on. So this is very important because when you look at your own paradigms, what is preventing you from taking the next step and being courageous and brave and asking that person Those questions that will shake their cup. Are you afraid to introduce tension into the relationship? Why are you afraid to do so? See, when you trust your intuition, and like Tim Grover says, when your instincts trust you, you are free to make decisions, and you are not afraid to deal with conflict. I want you all to learn from my mistakes. See, in my most recent book, The Circular Continuum, which, by the way, is on Kindle, it is on paperback, it is on hardcover. I wanted to make sure I threw that in there. In my most recent book, The Circular Continuum, I expose four phases of transformation in the individual or in the organization. Think the law of correspondence. Whenever there is a transformation in an individual, the same process of growth applies to an organization. And that is why my book, is a game changer. Read it when you get a chance. The regression or falling back effect that I mention here is similar to what I describe as phase two and phase three of the circular continuum model. Phase two is negotiation. This is when an idea is introduced. So let's talk about it. The paradigm is located in the bottom section of the model, in the comfort zone. After an idea is presented, and pressure is applied to the conscious mind, a negotiation process comes into effect. And it is often the catalyst that places the individual or the organization into the tension zone. That tension exposes either regression or falling back or progression into the next phases. Phase four is emancipation. That's freedom. That's where we want to get to in the model, but you must first go through the two phases of negotiation and the third phase, which is the wall. This is when you're emotionally connected with whatever it is, it is your paradigm. So there is a fight, a war that takes place between the two sorts, the A sort and the B sort as described earlier in other episodes. So if I just speak plainly here, when you introduce pressure by placing a person in an uncomfortable situation, That is when regression typically takes place and people revert to their safe place. Otherwise, this is called paradigm. In general, when a person experiences tension or pain, right, fight or flight, they'll either stay stagnant and be paralyzed, which is paradigm, or they will regress, which is also paradigm. So this is very important. Now, not only them, an organization as well. An organization, when confronted with tension, because a concept or an idea is introduced, let's think 
Lean manufacturing, for those that know what I'm talking about here, when you introduce lean manufacturing, a methodology, a paradigm shift to control costs into an organization, sometimes the people within that organization, because they are so entangled with the paradigm of that organization or the ASOR, they will fight against the transformation. And this is the negotiation and then the wall effect. This is why I say it is about the law of correspondence. It's very, very interesting stuff. So in conclusion, if you are always on the wrong side of relationships, either individually or organizationally, it is not because you are the victim. It is because you, as the leader of your life, we're talking about self-government here and personal development. It is because you have not properly shaken the cups of the people around you. I'll go further to say you have not shaken the cup of yourself and understood the paradigms that exist within yourself and why you are being stopped or what are the constraints stopping you from going to the next level. Are you setting standards for yourself? Are you setting goals for yourself? These are critical questions to ask yourself. Now, you can do this in a professional manner. You don't have to be unprofessional in your presentation of information. You can do this professionally, but don't hold back. Either you're trying to protect yourself or you're trying to protect your business or your family. Don't hold back in trying to discover the true motives of the people around you. Ask those tough questions and don't compromise. Now, once again, I'm going to continue writing my chapter in the Cracking the Rich Code book by Jim Britt. I'm very excited about it. Next week, episode number eight, I am going to introduce the concept of the devil inside of us. If you want to get a hold of me and you want me to speak on a certain topic, if you have questions or comments, feel free to email me at raymond.rivera at rgfirm.net. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. I'm very excited about where we're going with this. Don't forget, if you haven't picked up a copy yet, The Circular Continuum, Paradigm Shift Manifesto, that one is out. And also, an introduction to coaching in my book, The Wall Within, Rewiring Your Mind for Success. This is very intricate stuff, but if I can do it, anyone can. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Your feedback means the world to me. And don't forget, when you're out there on the front lines, to be brilliant, be brief, and be gone. Have a great and safe week.